Hello everyone. Today I wanted to talk about the boogeyman for the reptile community, and that would be reptile mites. If you've heard of reptile mites, everyone will tell you that it is so, so bad. And I'm here to tell you that it's not actually all that bad. It's a lot of work, but if you put in the work, I can almost guarantee you that you won't have the mites. So what are reptile mites? Reptile mites might better be known as snake mites, mostly because they affect snakes a lot more than they do most other reptiles, being that they have more overlapping scales. The mites usually like to get underneath these scales and they're protected in there. So it usually affects snakes and such animals a lot more that have overlapping scales. The long and short of it though, is that mites are basically parasites that suck the blood of your ball python or whatever reptile you might be keeping. You might think of them like fleas and in a lot of ways they are but we'll get on some differences here that actually work in most people's favor thank god reptile mites do not affect mammals they aren't going to bite you they aren't going to go for your family they aren't going to go for your other a million pets just reptiles another difference which is so great is that they don't jump. Please jump, it makes them harder to deal with, but reptile mites don't, they just walk. And they can walk a pretty long distance, so don't think you're safe just because you have a reptile with mites in a different room. Mites can reproduce fast, which is part of the reason why they're so scary. I believe that most reptile mites don't even need a male and a female to reproduce. One female can create a whole headache. So how do you know if you have reptile mites? Well, the first bit might be obviously seeing them, but they are very, very small. They will appear as little black dots, and these are pretty much the adults. Besides being underneath individual scales of your snake, you can find them around the vent of your snake, around the eyes of your snake, the heat pits of your snake on the lower part of the jaw. They could also be around the corners of their mouth and near or in their nostrils. Just give your snake a once over every now and again, and you don't even really need to do this with every single one of them. You can probably just do it with some of them, especially your lighter colored snakes they're obviously going to stand out a little bit more on something with that sort of contrast other signs of mite infestation would come in the form of little sores on your snake you'd see little red bumps on them just like with you had getting bit by a mosquito or something like that it's going to be very similar with a snake you also might find your snake soaking a lot more as well and while this isn't in and of itself a bad thing they soak for many different reasons if they're doing it a lot i think it's time to take a look usually they're doing that to actually drown the mites they understand that when their body is underwater, they're not being bitten anymore. I would say just look in the water for dead carcasses floating, but usually, especially if you're using a different type of substrate, you're gonna get a lot of floating stuff in that water. So just little teeny specks here and there are going to throw you off, but they do not spend their whole lives on your animal, which you might think is a good thing, but it's actually a bad thing because it makes it really difficult to find them. They'll often spend time in your enclosure, underneath your substrate. They could be outside of the enclosure, laying eggs in different spots. It can be a difficult task to find every single one of them, but you don't really need to, to treat them. And on that, I want to talk about how to prevent them, which is the best way to treat them. Step number one would be to inspect any snakes that you are planning to bring home. Just give them a quick once over. You don't need to look all vicious. Most people who, if you're buying a snake from them, are going to let you see the snake, even if they're handling it. For the most part, you should be able to see any issues from there. Again, though, mites can be small and the breeder might not know they have them, so it is completely possible to miss something. You shouldn't be paranoid that everybody's going to sell you a mite ridden snake. But no matter what, when you get your snake home, you should take a closer look at them. Besides inspecting them, I almost always treat them with reptile spray. Yes, this means that if I do not think that they have mites, I still treat them with reptile spray. Now it's important to follow the rules on this to the T, mostly being that you shouldn't overdo it. This spray, you can spray right on your reptile. Don't do it in their eyes and don't do it to the point where there's runoff. You can actually spray it on a cloth if you'd want and just wipe the reptile down. That might be better as well. You also don't want to do this more than in three day intervals. The way this works is that my understanding is that it actually dries out the mite and kills them. Unfortunately, this means that it does that to your snake too. It's not going to do that to a point where it's really, really bad, but it can damage their skin if it's done too much. And eventually it can lead to some sicknesses as well. So you can actually use this stuff to wipe down and clean the sides of your enclosures and the insides of the tubs or tanks or wherever you're keeping them as well. And that'll help kill them off a lot better too. But mostly just read the instructions on the back of it. You don't want to use this right after them shedding their skin. And you don't want to use it on an animal typically under 12 weeks old. Most hatchlings are going to be 
at or above that in most cases anyway, so you don't really have much to worry about there. Long and short, read the instructions. This stuff works very, very well. However, it doesn't have lasting effects. It kills them on the reptile as I said, but where do they spend most of their time? Not on your reptile. So if you're getting a snake home, doing a treatment on them of this one time, just with a cloth, isn't a bad idea. And it's certainly something you should do if you know that you have mites. If you decided to purchase that snake and you tried to take a look at the snake and you find mites later, don't freak out. It's actually very easy, in my opinion, at this stage to prevent an outbreak. You've got the one snake that's isolated. And I just told you that they typically don't live their whole lives on their hosts. So they're going to be looking to get off of their hosts. Don't let them. One of the ways I deal with it is with this right here. Ortho Home Defense. I buy it from Walmart or Meyer. This stuff is glorious. I actually started getting this once when my pets had fleas, but it works even better against mites because what did I say earlier? Mites do not jump. They have to walk. So this is a perfect way to isolate a snake when you first get them home. You put your rack or whatever tub or enclosure that you have them in in a separate spot and you spray this around that room or literally in the doorways of rooms. I usually keep a snake that I have purchased separate for at least a week if not more. You know obviously you're trying to look for anything that's wrong with them. I usually keep a snake in a separate enclosure, which I will then also surround with this stuff. So let's say that it's too late. You're playing with your snake one day, you're inspecting them, feeding them, and you notice it. It's on one of your snakes in your rack. That means it's probably had access to every single other snake. It's in there. What do you do? Well, what I said earlier with the carpet spray, I would do that, but I would go crazy. Now remember, this is poison. Do not spray this stuff into your enclosures. That is not its intention. Also be aware of any small children. If you have babies that don't know any better, you don't want to get it on your hand and put it in your mouth. And the same thing with your other pets, cats, dogs. So you're going to want to do probably room by room. So do the separate rooms in the house, bedrooms, start with your reptile room, do it around the entire perimeter, probably some X patterns and around the enclosures as well. Wait till night to do the room where most of the people are in, say like the living room. Wait for it all to dry before letting anybody else to come back in. It doesn't take a very long time, 20, 30 minutes typically. Another thing that you're going to want to do is give your snake a soak. Again, they do this themselves, but we want to help them along and actually eliminate the mites from them at that very moment. It's important to start off without putting any soap in there, but you're going to want to eventually use just a little bit of Dawn soap in this water as well. The reason you don't want to start off with any soap is to give the animal a chance to drink. Now that they're in the water, they might take that opportunity to take a long drink of water. And while this stuff isn't going to kill them if they ingest it, it's not good for them. So start off maybe 10, 20 minutes, let them sit in the water, lukewarm water. You might need to dump that water out and get some more lukewarm water, then put the Dawn soap in there. Let them sit in there for about 20, 30 minutes and you should be good to go. The next step would probably be what I think is the most important one and that would be using a reptile fogger essentially. Provenamite is probably the most known and popular one. It's specifically designed for reptiles. You should probably always have some on hand even if you don't have mites. This stuff isn't always easy to procure right away and it's not exactly cheap and if you need to get it a little bit faster it's probably going to be even a little bit more expensive. Alternatively I've found that you can actually use lice or bed bug spray. Often found at Walmart or your local grocery chain. The name brand of that is called NYX, I believe it is, or RID or something like that. But basically, it's some sort of spray. It's not a fogger necessarily, like I said. But the point of it is, is that you spray this stuff in your enclosure and then you let it dry. And this prevents ticks and fleas and all sorts of crazy stuff for, I believe, up to a month. Again, it's very, very, very important to follow the instructions on this. Unlike reptile spray, do not spray this directly onto your snake. This is a surefire way to get them killed. They need to be removed from their enclosure, preferably while you're letting them soak or treating them in a different way. And you want to make sure that you remove their water bowl. Keep the substrate that you are planning to use in there. That substrate should not be soaking wet. It should be normal. Honestly, if you think that you have mites or if you know that you have mites, I would recommend temporarily switching your substrate to paper towel. This makes it a lot easier, especially white paper towel, to spot these mites as well so that you can further step in or treat where needed. But this stuff is going to have a long lasting effect and it's going to keep killing them for a long time to come. 
After you've completed all these steps, it's important to follow up with the exact same steps. Treat your snake again in about two to three weeks. Again, spray down the container with Preventamite or the name brand bed bug and tick and lice spray in about two to three weeks. There's going to be stragglers and survivors that hatch later. And what you're trying to do here is prevent a reinfestation because a lot of people think they've got it handled. They do that first treatment and they think it's gone and then it happens again. You need to make sure you're on it. For really bad infestations, you might need to do it a few times because the alternative is that you just wasted all your time doing all this and you still have mites. You'll notice how I didn't mention anything about going to a vet, and that's not because I don't think it would be effective. I just think that you can treat it yourself and for a lot less money. Going to a vet can be an effective way to treat it though. I believe that there's essentially frontline for snakes. I've never really used that, but I've seen people say that they use frontline to treat the closure at the very least. You can go to the vet. It's just if you've got a lot of animals, that's going to be a lot of money. And I think that this is something that you can honestly tackle yourself and it's going to take just as much work. And most of the stuff that they give you is going to be this. If you wanted to see how to treat a respiratory infection in your snake, you can check that video out right here.